The world is a buzz about electric pickup trucks. Everybody's talking about it. And I mean everybody. But there is one elephant in the room. Actually, two elephants, two serious problems that very few people are discussing and no electric pickup truck manufacturer addressed this directly quiet yet. These two problems are the driving range when towing a heavy trailer or carrying a heavy load and off-road driving range for electric pickup trucks. These two problems all electric trucks will face and must face in order to become successful and possibly break into the mainstream. And in this video, I'm gonna show you guys our TFL truck real world testing using a Tesla Model X for towing performance and also off-roading to demonstrate these two problems I'm talking about. And at the end of the video, I'll also give you a couple of possible solutions to these issues. How did we get here? I was in New York City in 2017 when Bollinger rolled out their B1 electric SUV. They also called it the sport utility truck. And then this year, we also were the first to bring you their latest production ready prototypes, the B2 pickup truck and the B1 SUV. Also in 2018 at the LA Auto Show last year, I was there and TFL Truck brought to you guys the news about the new Rivian R1T pickup truck. And the news went huge. And ever since then, 2017, 2018, and now 2019 and forward, the electric pickup truck news have continued to grow and grow. And it's just catching everybody's attention. And I think partially it's because all of the electric truck manufacturers are talking about torque, power, acceleration, and driving range, but the driving range they're talking about is unladen truck, basically empty, maybe with a couple of people. They're mentioning and talking about EPA ratings, which is basically an unladen vehicle driving down the road. But that's not what trucks do. In order to become a mainstream pickup truck, you must be able to tow a trailer and do it in a sustainable and reliable way and potentially doing it long distance. And if you want to overland, if you want to go camping, you have to have off-road driving range, not just capability, not just tires, but actually get somewhere and get back home. Bollinger is stating about 200 miles driving range, EPA unladen. Tesla Cybertruck is listing driving range between 250 miles and 500 miles, once again, unladen. Rivian is stating up to 400 plus miles of driving range, once again, estimated unladen. None of them have addressed what happens when you actually put a sizable trailer behind it and what happens when you go off-road, how are you gonna deal with all these issues? So I wanna take a break and stop talking about the tug of war demo and marketing stunt that Tesla did of a Ford F-150 versus their Tesla Cybertruck and just focus on these two big problems and show you what we have done. We purchased a Tesla Model X recently. It's an all-wheel drive Tesla Model X long range with a driving range stated at 325 miles, which is reasonable. It's an SUV. Ours is a two row. It can also be had with three rows of seats and 325 miles is pretty good driving range. And we purchased it for testing for uh, very two specific reasons. First of all, it has a 5,000 pound towing capacity from the manufacturer, from Tesla, and that's the greatest um, towing capacity currently available on sale for an electric vehicle. And secondly, it's an all-wheel drive, so we wanted to turn it into a bit of an overland machine and actually lift it up a little bit, maybe put some off-road tires on it and actually take it overlanding, maybe tow a small camping trailer with us. And we had issues with all of that. So first up, Tommy and I took the Tesla Model X on our highway MPG loop, and we did it both empty and also with a 4,400 pound trailer. And here's what happened. 
we are eight minutes into our drive and already the battery percentage has decreased from a um, expected 53% at the turnaround to an expected 48% at the turnaround. So Andre, we are coming up to our first 15 miles on the loop towing. Now as a reminder, in the first 15 miles of our empty loop, we averaged 274 watt hours per mile. So now? it's going to be more than that. I can already tell you that we're at 14.5. This is a number you want to pay attention to. We're at 924 watt hours per mile. So is that triple or? So it's 3.37. 3.37 times more yeah. energy. Well, yeah, times the watt hour per mile that we've been averaging. Yeah, which means we may be able to make it back to the truck stop, but there's no charger there. Right. So we may end up sleeping at the truck stop well, tonight. I have to go 36 miles back to the New York Supercharger. Um, honestly, <laughs> the amount of power we're using right now is astonishing. What is even more astonishing is how Tesla manages to keep these motors cool at 93, 94 degrees. I mean, this is a lot of power going through these motors. By the way, I was just passing a truck and there was still a lot of acceleration left. Yeah. Like, if I wanted acceleration, I could have it. So there's a lot of power still here. Andre, we're coming up to the 30 mile updates. Now, just as untowing, this second 15 mile stretch actually went a little bit better in terms of consumption. So let me know when we're at 30. 29.9, 30. There you go. So 896. Average. Yeah, watt hours per mile. The first one was 926, so we're doing better. But that's pretty, pretty terrible What still. was it without the trailer at the 30 mile mark? Yep, 269. Oh boy. I thought this would be kind of a cakewalk. It's not going to be a cakewalk. So Andre, we're at our turnaround point. We're down to 34% battery and we started with 67. So 67 minus 34. We used 33% battery to get here. 33? Yeah. And a we th a, a third. And we have 34% battery left to get us back to the truck. Let alone the charger, just to the no, truck. No, uh, 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 that's 1% per mile, which is exactly would be like, like empty Dude, when we get back. We're not going to make it. There were two surprises. First, when the Model X was empty and Tommy and I were in it driving down the highway, it was actually really efficient. And it actually beat the EPA rating uh, on the Model X. We actually got over 100 MPGE equivalent with this particular Model X. So that was, that was all good. But then we attached the trailer to it, which was a horse trailer, fairly tall, and the range dropped from possible 325 down to about 110 or so. Um, that was crazy, and this is driving highway speeds. Next up, Roman and Tommy took the Model X, the same car and the same trailer on the I Gauntlet World's Toughest Towing Test. Here's what happened. Right. And, and here we go. Go. I'm floored. Oh, it's, it's really pulling hard. Now when we usually do this, and we're doing like heavy-duty trucks, they cannot maintain the speed limit. And you're right, you know, maybe it's independent suspension, but this car is getting moved around a little bit uh, by that trailer. You feel it? Yeah, it doesn't feel like trailer sway. I mean, the vehicle itself is just not as planted as I like it to be. Yeah, there's a little bit of the uh, tail wagging the dog. Consumption. Let's see. Oh, we are through the roof. Yep, so that is where we were coming down the hill. This is up. In the last five miles, we've been averaging over 1,000 watt hours per mile. Of course, if we expand the range, you'll see that's where we went down. We can even make it bigger. But 1,000 watt hours per mile is just an incredible amount of consumption. Keep in mind that the Model X already uses a lot of consumption because it's a big, heavy crossover. And towing 4,500 pounds straight up is certainly not gonna help. Now, we can see the consumption and the projected range based on our mileage scale. So based on the last five miles, we have a projected range of 42 miles if we keep up this consumption, which we will. Well, based on our current consumption for the last five miles, our projected range is down to 33 miles with 58% battery. 33 miles, 32 now. 
So on this trip, we've been averaging a whopping, get this, 1,828 watt hours per mile. This has got to be some of the highest consumption I've ever seen. I'm surprised that my feet aren't getting hot. <laughs> I was actually there also during that video and I was behind the scenes chasing them in a Ram Rebel Rouser project truck. And I just remember when Roman and Tommy accelerated up the mountain on the eye gauntlet, um, we usually put the hammer down and they took off and I actually couldn't catch up to them in the Ram. <laughs> That's how much power and torque those electric motors produce. But on the flip side, they lost crazy amount of range because they were putting down all this power, hauling a heavy weight up the mountain. We were not done yet. We wanted to go camping and we wanted to drive from Colorado to Oregon for an Overland show. And we got a, a small camping trailer, off-road trailer, that weighs about 2,000 pounds. And they found this issue. 89 miles to get to the supercharger. And now we're only at like the very beginning of our trip at this point. All right, well, let's, let's keep going. But, uh, you know, sometimes you have to do it the hard way to learn. And I think we're learning. We're learning. If we could make it, we'd have to go 10 miles below the speed limit and, and we'd have to probably basically charge for an hour and then drive for an hour and a half. Well, the issue is we have to be in Oregon tomorrow night for the event, right? Yeah. So. Yes. Um, That's another issue. Well, yeah, for both of your event and my event too. Yeah. Yes. So, so let, let me plug in Cheyenne. See if we can make it to Cheyenne. Maybe you can jump in the uh, Land Cruiser, bring it up to us. We'll swap cars and then we'll just continue in the Land Cruiser. Well, uh, let me put Zach on the line. Hold on. Uh, They're struggling. They, they cannot make it. You can't make it. What's going on, guys? So Zach, can you jump in the Land Cruiser and come up, meet us in Cheyenne, please? We're going to need a couple things, though. What are we going to need? Well, we're going to need the toolbox. Why? Because we, we're going to have to mess with the hitch. Okay. Because the hitch is a lift right now. We'd have to make it a drop. Okay. Yeah, uh, Alex and I had to do that the last time we put it on the Land Cruiser, so I'll bring the tools for that. Guys, what about that section from Salt Lake up to Idaho? That's about 140 miles plus. If you can only go 90 miles, you won't. There's impossible to make it. Well, we use 60% of our battery to go 82 miles. Yeah, I don't think we can make it. Uh, I don't. I'm, I, I don't think. No. We, no, I don't think. You, you know, we, we just. And that was at 65 miles an hour. That, so maybe yeah. at like 55 you could make it. But that, I mean, it would be so tight. Okay. We want the Land Cruiser. Yes, Land Cruiser. What else? Could, we could do the truck too. Well, thanks for your help, guys. Right. I, I appreciate it. All right. And, um, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, Hey guys, I'm gonna send Zach, okay? Look, Zach is coming. Great, thanks, we're on our way there, thank you, bye. Here's the thing, if you're in Europe on small roads, slow speed limits, this might be doable. Yeah. Um, with short distances, but we're out here in the middle of Wyoming, right? With about 95 miles of the next supercharger. And yes, we could make it, but we'd have to supercharge for so long. I mean, the better route planner was roughly 50% off in terms of how long we needed to supercharge at that one for. Yeah. And if that continues to be the case, we just won't make it by the end of tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, it's just, we have to be there. We have a deadline. Uh, I, Andre has to be at an off-road expo. He's flying in and I have to go and judge the Automotive Video Awards. And I can't drive basically for the next 36 hours on the road and get there and then be a judge for the ABAs and do the videos. It's just not gonna work. So part of it I'm gonna take is our responsibility. We should have planned for more time. But um, yeah, I, it's, it's just, I think if you're not towing, it's fine. You know, yeah. but if you're towing, it, it's and you're on a deadline, it's just not doable. You know, if you guys have watched, like Tommy said, the European tow videos, where there, are, you know, I mean, this is there's nothing here, right? In Europe, you go 20 feet and you hit another Uber Velt or an Under Velt, right? Right. Here, just nothing. And if you run out of juice, you're done. Basically, even with a smaller trailer, they could drive about 110 miles once again so maybe an hour and a half of driving and then they had to schedule or find a charger and of course tesla itself helps you find a charger and then charge for about an hour so drive for about an hour and a half charge for an hour that with a trailer um, that is enough to drive anybody crazy so we actually canceled that trip and actually brought the tesla home 
Finally, off-roading. Um, the Tesla Model X has all-wheel drive capability, but uh, while well, there's issues with trying to lift it, it does have air suspension, which is very useful on road, also useful for towing, and it can level out the vehicle under load. That's all great, but the suspension system on the Model X specifically does not lend itself to a lift or a larger tire very easily. We had lots of issues finding tires for it. And the next issue is Roman took it up a rocky top off-road trail here in the Rocky Mountains, and here's what happened. This is not, you know, the Rubicon Trail, but even still slow. Okay, power it up. You're good. Nice and slow. I mean, look how close that rocker is to hitting even that mild stump. Nice. All right, here we go. Here's the hard part. Yep, that's a great line. Be nice and slow, please. Slow. Slow as possible, as fast as necessary. Okay, nice, nice and slow. I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, halt, halt, halt. Stop, stop. I can't use momentum because I will hit something. Normally, I could use momentum. Let me see if you're going slower. I can't go much slower, Tom. Yeah, you're going to make it. Yeah? You're doing good. You have to stay harder, passenger. Let me see what you're doing on that side. Try it again. You're good. I think you're stuck. I'll try one more. It doesn't smell good. Well, that's tire. Definitely hit there. Yeah. I definitely hit. Okay. Definitely hit there. Where we hit right here. Oh, it's not working. Stop. Yeah, that's a good case, please. Nice and out of that. Okay. It's not happy off the road. Hard as you can. I mean, it's just these tires, it's just not happy. I've spent the last 10 years off-roading, and you can pretty much tell immediately when a car is happy and when it's not happy, and this one's not happy. I'm not saying you can't do it, it's just not designed for it. Or you're gonna scrape the bottom. I can't I don't go think any. You're make this. What? Keep going. I, I, I can't go any slower. Yeah, we're gonna make it. Millimeters to spare there. There you go. This has been a pretty terrible experience, I must say. I just like maybe the batteries have some kind of protection, but it really just feels like plastic paneling under there. If you puncture one of those, your day's over. The forest days could be over. So we're gonna have to address this if we're gonna keep off-roading it. Yeah, basically, the car made it. It wasn't easy. The tires were okay, but once again, driving range suffered because Roman was trying to put all this torque down and moving very, very slowly, and there was some heat buildup, and uh, once again, lost a lot of range, and you can't just go out somewhere in the middle of nowhere and kind of plug yourself into a tree. Um, yes, you can bring some solar panels, maybe your trailer, but once again, that's not quite enough. I mean, it'll take hours or days to get usable range back into your electric truck in order to come home. And trucks are actually not just vehicles to take you from point A from to point B like a car would be. They're used for work. So if you want to be successful, if you want to hit the mainstream, these issues must be addressed. So there has to be a paradigm shift. And company, for example, like Atlas Motor Vehicle um, is building or creating their own battery technology that is able to be quickly charged. So Atlas is saying their new XT pickup truck would be able to tow about 15,000 pounds or maybe more with a gooseneck or a fifth wheel attachment. So a real heavy duty truck for towing and they're listing the driving range between about 250 and 500 miles. Once again, 
but once again, they're not stating driving range when towing and their charge times they're claiming at about 15 minutes to charge because they're using something, some other battery technology, not just the standard lithium ion charging and battery technology that currently exists. 15 minutes to recharge is great, fast, but where are you gonna do it? Once again, so Atlas is proposing building out a network of chargers across the country, which is kind of, will be proprietary for them, uh, for their vehicles, but that takes time. Building out a network of chargers takes time. Just see and look, look at what Tesla has done. Uh, they've built out their network of chargers and it's getting better and better every day, but it took them years to accomplish this. So all of these companies are saying that their trucks are gonna be in the market either by the end of 2020 or early 2021 or late 2021. So within the next two years, all these electric pickup trucks will be on the market. But in order to, for them to break into the mainstream, once again, they have to address this. So faster recharge times is very important. Also availability of those fast chargers is once again, very, very important. Also, another potential solution could be if your trailer is actually helping you. So if you're towing a little camping trailer, if it does have a lot of solar panels on it, and if it has maybe an electric motor in its own trailer axle to actually help you move along or actually regen energy if, as you're going downhill, that might be another solution that some companies might explore. So let us know your thoughts on this using the comment section below. Uh, what do you think about these two issues? How should companies address it? Or are you not worried about it? And uh, just let us know. And go back to tfltruck.com for my news views and real world pickup truck. And very soon, a lot of electric pickup truck reviews.